It may be addictively entertaining, but there are concerns TikTok could be an open door to some of your personal information. Prime Minister, will the government investigate TikTok over national security concerns at all? Obviously, we continue to watch carefully. TikTok is owned by a Chinese company, and there are questions about whether the Chinese government might exploit TikTok's security issues. This week, American lawmakers banned it from U.S. government devices, and there is a proposal in the United States to ban it outright. So to put it bluntly, how worried should you be about TikTok? Let's put that to two cybersecurity experts. Brian Hoagley is in Boston. He's the CEO of Side Channel and former cybersecurity leader with the U.S. Department of Defense and cybersecurity consultant Alana Stastichian is in Toronto. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, Brian, let me start with you. Uh, what makes the, the privacy concerns around TikTok different from, from other social media platforms? What, what kind of information can they get access to? So it's a, obviously it's a social media app that can be implement, uh, installed on Android or Apple um, phones or devices. I think the, the primary issue with that is its ability to look at and, and see and store your location through GPS, um, the networks that you're on, even be able to look at badge notifications. So if you've got a message from um, a friend or your mom or, or someone else, it has the ability to read that because you've granted those permissions to the TikTok application on your phone. And when you really kind of dig into all the app permissions that are in there, I don't think it's something that most users are either aware of or, or willing to really hand over to um, a company that's owned and, and housed inside of China. All right, so much more to talk about in that regard. But Elena, let's talk about another point, which is uh, the potential manipulation for political ends that TikTok might be used for by the Chinese government. Uh, tell us about that. Yeah, absolutely. So. Um, it's interesting with TikTok, the, the way it gathers information, ultimately, it's not um, insanely different than other applications, other social media applications. However, I think privacy uh, is a bit of a bigger risk issue with most people. Um, when you're talking at a more macro level, how are people uh, open to being psychologically manipulated on TikTok? And a lot of the user base on TikTok is younger generations um, lots of, you know, adolescents, teenagers, young adults, and uh, they have the potential to be radicalized. And this has happened in the past with issues like the DNC hack, where there was no tampering of the actual technical vote counts. Rather, it was the amplification of de divisive issues and targeting towards audiences that had a certain political ideology already in mind. Mm -hmm. um, so the question, you know, if I was a surveillance agent, I wouldn't be so concerned about, you know, can I hack into your phone and find pictures of you or something and blackmail you? I'd be more concerned about who are you hanging out with? What communities are you part of? Um, what social institutions do you not get along with? And how can I use that to radicalize you and uh, make you an yep. agent of our political ends? Yeah, I mean, you could you could certainly see theoretically, right, that uh, during a political campaign or just a, a, a debate within a country on a polarizing issue, uh, if if you know how how any social media platform, including TikTok, could uh, could manipulate how people feel by promoting some videos and and not promoting other videos. But you also raise another interesting question, right, which is the difference between what could happen with TikTok and what actually would happen. So, Brian, let me ask you that. Even if TikTok is this potential window into some of our personal information on our phone, do you think there's a real threat there? I, I do. And, and I've, I've challenged um, senators and, and congressmen to really start taking action um, on looking in, into this. We have a foreign state. We have a foreign adversary, right? China and U.S. relations, at least I can stand on this from the United States perspective, uh, are not great. And we know that they have military operations, economic operations that are operating through cyberspace. The Chinese government has a stake inside of ByteDance, which is the company that put out TikTok. TikTok can aggregate an immense amount of data on U.S. citizens and be able to start determining actions, intent, willfulness, um, and, and really behavior to be able to then bring back an aggregate and analyze and use in either a political, economic, or potentially a military way. So it it very much is an issue for US citizens, and I think any citizens to be um, concerned about. They also have the ability to influence the algorithm and what you're being showed. Those of us mm -hmm. in the United States are being showed things drastically different than other parts of the world. So the ability to 
show certain information and suppress other information to be able to sway people um, is very real. And it now sits on the phone, right? And everybody's mm -hmm. eyeballs are, are on these things. So I still think it is a very much a concern to be addressed. So we have one minute left, so 30 seconds to each of you, and I'll begin with you, Alana. Uh, a lot of people watching are parents, uh, so they're concerned about their kids on TikTok or themselves on TikTok. Do you suggest that if people have concerns about the things that you guys have raised, they should shut it down, or, or what's kind of one thing they could do to make it safer for them? Um, shutting down an application just leaves room for other applications to make carbon copies of that application, as well as um, for younger people to learn how to circumvent those controls, such as, for example, like people using VPNs for Netflix. Um, so I think it's more important to educate people how to use this as a safety, uh, sorry, safely use TikTok as a social, social media tool, uh, rather than try to take it away from them and potentially lower their own security um, by trying to you know, get around these uh, circumventions. Yeah, and Brian, your advice, shut down TikTok or, or, or what should we do to be safer? Um, so removal of this application is not going to happen unless we're having a good t conversation with, with Google and with Apple about removing it from the App Store. I, I think with anything else and as a parent, that conversation needs to happen between a parent and their children about responsible use of social media. But at the very least, if anybody can take away from this conversation today, is to relook at the permissions that you've authorized TikTok to your phone. Do you know that it's accessing your camera, your microphone, your history, information that's on your phone that you didn't realize. Turn those off and have that discussion and make that part of the education that I agree with Alana on. Well, it's great hearing from both of you. I feel like we're going to have this conversation again, and we should. But thanks for talking to us tonight. Thank you.